uh, notices of motion given early will now come under after which is number four? Five. Number five. Presentation of papers. Okay, five. We will now come now. Sorry. No. No. Presentation of papers. We'll come now. We'll now come now, which is after the item public business. Uh, Roman numeral three, which is now. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the other will follow consequential. Okay. Good. I also would like to move, Madam Speaker, some amendment to the resolution before, in fact, I get, I need to do it. Before I do present the resolution that's coming before us, should I do that now or? You can do it while you're on. Your while I'm on my feet, right? The resolution, Madam Speaker, and the and the third paragraph of the resolution, it should say, where is the cabinet next? Third, the post component by section 3, 1 of the act. And should we remove that following clause by memo number 200, 2006-2008 removed. Approved on the plan, it had been nine to be 10th of July. Sorry, 10th of October. And the following sentence. Go ahead, sir. Man. Following sentence it should be changed to the 11th day of October, 2018. And the other sentence, and the, the third line, should be on the House of Assembly on the 11th day of October, 2018. And the, the following line, um, from the 10th day of July, 10th of October 2018. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Can we have a second for the motion? Madam Speaker, I write the second motion. Thank you. A motion has been moved and seconded that the other paper be renumbered so that the item presentation of papers comes immediately followed by the motion in respect of the Virgin Islands Recovery and Development Plan follows immediately after presentation of papers and the motion in relation to the plan, the dates have been amended to read cabinet approved the plan on the 10th of October 2018 and the plan to be laid in the House of Assembly on the 11th day of October 2018 in both places as it as it appears. Those in favor? Aye. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes carry. The motion is passed. The order paper is amended so that the presentation of papers comes now, followed by the resolution for the approval of the recovery and development plan. And just for information purposes, it puts the order paper exactly where it was when we started the House of Assembly sitting. So everything will follow consequentially. Madam Clark. Item number five, presentation of papers. The Honorable Premier and Minister of Finance who will now present his papers. Speaker, with your permission, I'd like to put today on the table the following documents. The Complaints Commission 8 Annual Report, 1st January to 31st September 2016. The Complaints Commission Financial Report 2016 and Recovery Development Plan of the Virgin Islands. Thank you, Honorable Premier and Minister of Finance for presenting your documents on the table. We will now continue in accordance with the other paper with government business. And I'll call on the Honorable Premier and Minister of Finance who will move a motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <coughs> Madam Speaker, where is Section 3, 1 of the Virgin Islands Recovery and Development Agency Act 2018, number 1 of 2018, there are not to refer to as the Act. Provided the Premier or any other minister to whom the subject for recovery and development is assigned, with the approval of the Cabinet, 
shall consistent with the purpose of the Act be responsible for developing and further reviewing the Virgin Islands Recovery and Development Plan, airing after referrals of the plan. Which plan is for the recovery and development of the Virgin Islands following the disaster affecting the territory in August and September 2017? Verse Section 3, Part 5 of the Act, provide that such plans are developed shall be laid before the House of Assembly within 60 days following its approval right by the Cabinet, and it shall be subject to an informative resolution of the House. Whereas the Cabinet exercised the powers conferred on it by Section 3, Part 1 of the Act, approved the plan on the 10th day of October 2018. And whereas the plan is laid on the table of the House of Assembly on this 11th day of October 2018, now therefore be it resolved that the House of Assembly of the Virgin Islands approved the plan laid on the table of the House of Assembly on the 11th day of October 2018 and that the said plan is the Virgin Islands Recovery and Development Plan from the 10th day of July 2018. <coughs> yes, and it's, the, Speaker, the 10th day of October 2018. Madam Speaker, I'd like with your permission to be able to give a summation of the act before that I now introduce under the, the plan. You may proceed, Honorable Premier. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to learn the table is on the House to recover the development plan of the Virgin Islands. This plan, Madam Speaker, reflects our aspirations, determination, and commitment to build a stronger, smarter, greener, and better BVI. Specifically, this plan was developed with the people of this, and thus includes their imprint for growing the economy, empowering our society, protecting the environment, and strengthening our infrastructure and government systems. You see, Madam Speaker, we recognize the opportunity afforded to us by the catastrophic events of 2017 to use recovery to set this territory on a development path which will provide a better future for our people and which will make the BVI the ideal place to live, work, visit, and do business. Before I launch into the details of this plan and how it will be implemented, Madam Speaker, permit me to very briefly remind the Honorable House of the process we undertook to arrive at this point of tabling a comprehensive recovery to development plan that will get us to where we aspire to be as a territory. <coughs> Madam Speaker, we simultaneously began the process of planning a recovery while we are building back critical infrastructure and providing essential services to all BVA residents to return to a state of normal living. The preliminary report to development plan contained proposals for helping the territory to recover in the short term and to develop into a more sustainable and resilient state in the longer term. <coughs> we took those initial proposals to every island and district throughout the BBI to consult with the public and other stakeholders in order to ensure that the people of the Virgin Islands had direct input. A copy of the report of the public and stakeholder consultation was laid in the table of this Honorable House on June 28, 2018, and is available to the public. When the Speaker, what we quickly realized is that the people of the Virgin Islands were more interested in helping to shape or broader development for the Virgin Islands rather than merely giving input to the recovery of the Virgin Islands. Ultimately, it was very clear from these consultations that there was a strong demand from the public and other stakeholders to have a plan that transcended the immediate recovery needs and reflected the longer-term development aspirations of the territory. And to speak in the answer of some time, we could have taken a shortcut and merely produced additional projects that we saw determined as urgent and critical for this territory's recovery and future development. But we quickly came to the conclusion of simply producing a list of projects without having set the strategic priorities for BBI's recovery or objective criteria to arrive at the projects will undermine our ability to deliver this recovery in an efficient and effective manner. Madam Speaker, we are equally cognizant of the expectations of the international community. The stark reality is that the absence of a comprehensive recovery development plan would seriously impede our ability to access loan guarantees and other technical financial support. 
We did not want to run the risk of not having a harmonious and systematic implementation of recovery and not being able to fund it. Accordingly, Madam Speaker, we wanted to ensure, for example, that when we redevelop the West End Ferry Terminal, we'll also simultaneously, simultaneously fix the roads leading to the main tourism attractions, thus achieving the strategic outcome of improving the tourism product and visitor experience while giving a necessary boost to the tourism economy. Therefore, directed by the public, we created a plan that establishes a vision supported by a set of projects that, when taken together, can deliver social and economic benefits to the territory. We fundamentally believe that this plan not only meets the needs of the territory, but is bankable. Essentially, it can attract funding and financing more easily than if a set of unrelated projects were identified and presented to this House. When I speak of what emerged from this process, a very comprehensive document that is built on inputs from government, inclusive ministries and statutory bodies, the general public and stakeholders and experts across various sectors. The plan sets out the roadmap for the recovery of the territory, but more importantly, it sets out a number of development objectives, projects and initiatives, which would form the basis of our long-term development priorities and actions. We fundamentally believe that the plan requires a collaborative implementation process involving the various partners leveraging their comparative advantages for the benefit of the territory and its people. <coughs> Madam Speaker, now that we have a broad and comprehensive plan, my government can strategically set out priority projects for the medium term to be implemented in collaboration with ministries, statutory bodies, the Recovery and Development Agency, non-government organization, or development partners in the private sector. Division. When the speaker permit me to elaborate on the contents of the plan. Firstly, it sets out a clear vision for the recovery and development of the territory. Our vision is that the BBI will be a model for building stronger, smarter, greener, and better by fostering a vibrant and innovative economy, cohesive and empowered society, nurtured and sustainable environment, resilient infrastructure, good governance, and high quality of life for all. <coughs> this vision, Madam Speaker, is expected to be delivered across five priority sectors and 26 subsectors. The sectors are human and social services, business and economy infrastructure, natural resources and climate change, and governance. Each of these sectors are addressed in detail in Section 4 of the plan. A number of projects, programs, and policy initiatives are presented under each subsector and a summarized in Appendix 3 of the plan. Sector responds in brief on the speaker. On the speaker, I will summarize what we propose to achieve under each of our priority sectors. Under human and social services, the people of this territory are the core of our plans, and as such initiatives in the human and social services sector are being given some of the highest priority. In this sector, we further <coughs> In this sector, we aim to further develop our healthcare system to make it more than accessible, affordable, and innovative. <coughs> we aim to provide social protection for vulnerable population, to develop an education system that is modern, resilient, well-resourced, technology-driven, and relevant to industries, and invest in development for all sites and assets of historical importance, and cultivate our talents, arts, sports, and creative industries to education. For business and economy, Madam well, Speaker, business economy is a sector that drives the recovery and economic development of the territory. We recognize that the private sector and their businesses are perhaps the most important driver of the recovery and the development of the territory. Thus, we want to solidify the BBI's worldwide competitive position in tourism and financial services Diversify the economy by introducing viable economic sectors based on technology and innovation, and establish an enabling environment for businesses, including efficient business support services and access to finance. In infrastructure, the flood and storm event exposed significant vulnerabilities on infrastructure. My government has therefore renewed our commitment to improving our building standards and incorporating resilient and innovative techniques in all infrastructure, 
including roads, electricity, water, and energy generation. We want the infrastructure to better withstand disasters and high levels of stress, while ensuring it meets the current and future development needs of the territory. Natural resources and climate change, Madam Speaker, our natural resources and the environment sustain significant damage from the disasters. Apart from restoring a clean environment, we have renewed our efforts to preserve our environment and protect it from future vulnerabilities, including man-made threats and climate change. We also support recycling and other green initiatives and renewable energy technologies. And governance, Madam Speaker, the final priority sector is governance. Here is where we focus on the public service, law and order, and disaster management. The disasters have presented an opportunity for the public service to reconsider how it does business and transform it so that it provides more efficient delivery of public service. As a speaker, the government is committed to protecting the safety, security, and rights of all the people and ensuring that the rule of law is upheld. Therefore, the plan will strengthen law and order institutions and systems so they can work efficiently and harmoniously, modernize the court system, and improve prison facilities, operations, and rehabilitation programs. When the Madam Speaker, a disaster management system was severely impacted. We have restored them to level grade their function for this hurricane season. And we are further working on strengthening the disaster management system and infrastructure for better preparedness and greater resilience. Madam Speaker, together the projects, programs, and policy initiatives from the, form the basis for the BBS Recovery Development Plan of the Virgin Islands at an indicative cost of $581 million. Madam Speaker, it's important that I amplify that these are only indicative costs, which means that they are preliminary estimate of costs based on similar projects implemented in the past and we used to arrive at approximate costs for planning processes. The cost of recovery is significant and expected to be funded over a number of years. Members would appreciate that the majority of funding will be through loans. Already the government has secured from the Caribbean Development Bank a loan of $65 million to finance critical recovery projects and will seek to leverage the UK's guarantee of 300 million pounds to fund the recovery. So it is also anticipated the funding for the recovery will also be sourced from government to government spending, private sector collaboration, grants, and insurance proceeds. What implementation of the plan, Madam Speaker? Well, Speaker, as we continue with our implementation and deliver on the recovery and development in this territory, my colleagues and I are fully committed to the mandate that was given to us as a government. However, given the wide scope of the recovery to the development plan of the Virgin Islands, ranging from rehabilitation to recovery, to development projects, programs, and policy initiatives, we will appreciate the need to ensure that respective roles and responsibilities are clearly articulated. Without a doubt, the government of the Virgin Islands is responsible for the recovery of this territory, and more importantly, its longer-term development. As Premier, I have specific responsibility for the recovery after disasters, and as well, together with my ministers, we have constitutional responsibility for the development of our territory across the various constitutional portfolios. Each of the priority sectors, as well as the subsectors laid out in this plan, are inextricably tied to these portfolios. In that regard, when the Speaker of the Ministries, the Ministers will play a critical role in both the recovery and development of this territory. Firstly, it is our responsibility, as we have done, to develop the recovery to development plan of the Virgin Islands which we acknowledge is comprehensive in nature. Secondly, it is our responsibility to determine and put in place the legal framework, as well as the institutional structures and mechanisms that will facilitate the recovery and development of the territory. This is critical to ensure that all stakeholders know their role in the implementation process. In addition to the role of the government and ministries, the recovery and development agency which was, recent, was recently established by this Honorable House to be responsible to government for, for implementing aspects of a recovery in conjunction with the ministries and in partnership with NGOs, private sector, and the development partners. 
Our speaker gave him the right score for the recovery development plan. It is critical to advance recovery in a systematic and phased manner and to achieve optimal outcomes for people in the territory. This is why the RDA's work will be guided by regulations in addition to the Act, which is being brought in this in the force. These regulations will play a critical role in ensuring that execution of the plan results in a BPI-led and own recovery. More specifically, the importance for building capacity within the private and public sectors and our communities and demonstrating procurement processes based on international standards. Madam Speaker, I believe that the procurement processes that the RDA will adopt will provide for efficiency, transparency, accountability during project implementation and also ensure meaningful participation by vendors and contractors. On the speaker, the principles that guide these regulations have just been recently been approved by cabinet and agreed by cabinet and will be brought to the House in the form of regulations for consideration and approval. As a reminder of the speaker, the RDA is tasked with efficient execution of projects well inherited to the high standard of transparency and accountability to the people of the Virgin Islands and ensuring proper coordination with government ministries and external partners. The RDA will provide regular updates on the delivered projects of the Cabinet and House of Assembly in the form of monthly and annual reports. In conclusion, Madam Speaker, much thought, planning, consultation, consideration, analysis and discussion went into the formulating the recovery development plan of the Virgin Islands. Madam Speaker, we are at a critical crossroads in the development of our territory. The action that we take now will determine our future and that of generations to come. It is important that we get this right. I believe that the plan I've laid out today serves as the first step in that direction. The road to recovery will be long and arduous. As we move along our development path, the same will be true. However, Madam Speaker, I firmly believe that with a comprehensive plan in hand, principles to guide the development with the necessary regulations, we now have the necessary tools to further the recovery as well as our development. Of course, Madam Speaker, we continue efforts to raise funds, including securing the guarantee and subsequent borrowing in order to fund the activities. With these key ingredients in place, our collective vision for the future we will be delivered through a collaborative process led by the government, its ministries, and supported by the Recovery Development Agency, as well as donors, NGOs, private sector, and development partners. And Speaker, I want to encourage all who call this territory home to remember that we are stronger together. Let us be each other's keeper and unite under the vision for the future of the BVI. And one BVI and together we are BVI stronger. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <coughs> <coughs> One minute, Madam Speaker. Right right. Madam Speaker, I was under the notion that this plan was setting out what the RDA will be responsible for and the regulations. That's the notion that I was under. And Madam Speaker, second of all, I must state this here under my, um, my, 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 my this point of information that I write. Madam Speaker, I don't know if, if it needs a, 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 a recess to go through this plan because this is an amended plan that I just received. And in this plan, Madam Speaker, I'm reading certain things where I'm not sure what all the RDA is responsible for, whether the entire plan or specific parts of the plan, and is there responsibilities for the RDA in writing. And Madam Speaker, while I know that we need a plan of recovery, I thought that we are, we are doing what the RDA will be responsible for and setting out what all the, um, the, 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 the costing for what they will be responsible for. But Madam Speaker, this seems to be, to be honest with you, to be a full manifesto. And the question I'm asking is this will bind the future government because I was concentrating on recovery. But this having things in it, Madam Speaker, to be honest with you, that is more than recovery. I'm seeing the airport in here, Madam Speaker, whether it's to go or go not is in here. I'm seeing things, Madam Speaker, in here that while I want to help my country to recovery, recover, these are going into development. So I'm wondering, Madam Speaker, if we don't need to, to get um, some kind of sit down before we go any further because I'm, I'm not clear now. I'm being asked to go approve something 
that Madam Speaker, I feel that this government in the late stage with a couple months left for election does not have the mandate to give the people. So I thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Leader of the Opposition and Member for the 4th District for the point of information raised. And you know the taken that the revised recovery and development plan was received by members only this morning, just before the start of the sitting. So I think I will take a very, I'll take a recess at this point, and then we will resume after the recess. This house will now take a recess. <laughs>
give an explanation. A point of information was raised by the Honorable Leader of the Opposition and Member for the First District, after which I recessed. So if I could get a second to the motion, then we can Thank you for seconding the motion, Honorable Deputy Premier and Minister for Natural Resources and Labor. The floor is now open for debate. Honorable members, I recognize the Honorable Minister for Communications and Works, who will now make its contribution. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I thank you for the opportunity to address the people of this Honorable House and the, the public on a very important matter, subject matter that is germane and very crucial to the growth and development and recovery, especially, of a territory of the Virgin Islands. And speak, I want to ensure that I weigh in on my strong support for seeing this country recover from what happened last year. And on top of that, Madam Speaker, I have no qualms and I have no um, hesitation in making it very clear that this is an opportunity to develop this country in the right direction. So the plan that we have, Madam Speaker, speaks to recovery and it also speaks to a comprehensive development pet plan for the Virgin Islands. We all had input in this manner, Speaker, but I want to commend the key persons, Mr. Broderick Penn and his team and all those surrounding him and the rest of the group who did a really good job of getting and putting this together. And I want to commend our premier and Minister of Finance for the arduous task and the long hours of discussions, negotiation that I know and I've seen him in, and his listening ears, his efforts to make changes to the plan based on comments by a number of persons, including persons in, the, in this honorable house, and his willingness down to yesterday to make adjustments to this plan to make sure that it's the right plan and the right direction that the territory is going to. It's an opportunity, Madam Speaker, as I said. No one, would, no one expected and no one hoped for. And we were all in total shock when we got up last year, Madam Speaker, especially from Hurricane Omer on that morning. That, that afternoon after the storm, when we realized that this was utter devastation in the territory of the Virgin Islands. I look at some pictures, even in this plan that we saw, and I still am trying to come to grips with, was that really how we looked after Hurricane Omer last year? Madam Speaker, We have been able to, after the storm, do our cleanup, thanks to all of the hard work, the, work with the private sector and the public sector, the various ministries, the Ministry of Health responsible for solid waste management, um, my team at the Public Works, and all the others, the Department Secretary and those, and all the various communities, persons in the communities, from east to west, north to south, who did hard work in cleaning up this country. I'm not going to dwell on that too much, Madam Speaker, but I just want to remind ourselves that we were in a devastated state. We still have a lot to do. We still have a lot of recovery to do, both in the public and the private sector. 
And sure, Madam Speaker, I would have liked to have a lot of things happen already that hasn't happened. As Minister responsible for the for for buildings like the like the fire station and the other buildings that are around that are still not up, I would have liked to see them up and repaired already. But it's where we are, we're going through the processes that have to, we have to go through to make it happen, and hopefully we can soon see some major changes there. Madam Speaker, the social fabric of this territory has been damaged, both from a physical standpoint and from an a, a emotional standpoint, to the point where we won't show that we will ever recover from any of those. You don't have to go very far. You look behind us here at the, the main high school in the territory, Madam Speaker. Sure, we would love like to see it that we, after the, the terrible storm, we had them back up and running and operating. But the reality is it was not possible in 12 months. So we have to make mm -hmm. our plans, our longer term plans, to a recovery and development of a territory. And the recovery cannot only speak to fixing buildings and, uh, and fixing roads and all the various infrastructure. The recovery, Madam Speaker, must speak, must speak to the future development of this territory in terms of what we are going to try to do to make the territory more resilient, to build a stronger economy, Madam Speaker, and to be able to provide the right social services to the people of our country. So I am... I am very anxious to see this plan ready to go, Madam Speaker, ready to go. Sure, we all have some concerns and some reticence about how it's going to be implemented, who's going to implement it, and we have, we have, we have, made, we have worked hard to make sure that the, the, the people of the territory are involved in the recovery and the future development of the territory. Nothing is wrong, Madam Speaker. Nothing is wrong with a government seeing the need for recovery and within that recovery seeing the need to put together a development plan of the territory. And the comments that I have heard, Madam Speaker, that a development plan for the territory should not come just before an election. Come on. What are we trying to say? that a government doesn't have responsibility to put together a development plan for the country because it's just before an election? We are now politicizing this plan. We are now, we are now trying to stall this plan and say there shouldn't be a development plan because of an election uh, looming. Madam Speaker, the responsibility of the government is to continue to put forward plans and developments for the territory, even up to the day before election, for the good of the people of the territory. Yes, you may call it political, so be it, but make sure it's a plan and development for the good of the people of the territory of the Virgin Islands. The future of our children and our grandchildren now, Madam Speaker, is at stake. Let's not play politics with it. For some reason, there is a feeling that the government is quickly trying to pass this development plan to get money to spend before an election. We need to get on with getting this country recovered and developed. I am always one for long-term development plans. But I, 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 we, we never were able to get a position where we could see the right funding to carry out that long-term development plan. Madam Speaker, here we are, <clears throat> where we have now been able to get some level of that funding for the longer-term development plan. And we must continue to play stalling games and play political games when we can get on with this country being developed. Sure, there are going to be things that, are not, that, 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 that we have these differences on and disagreements on. Sure, there are going to be things in this, in this, in this uh, redevelopment, recovery and development plan that I may not be totally happy with. 
none of us will be totally happy with it. But Madam Speaker, it's time to get on with it. And we, we have all also made sure that there is that there is in place, Madam Speaker, the ability for the future to make adjustments to this plan with the authority of this honorable house of assembly, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> so I hope I hope we can put aside our <clears throat> political differences and concerns and and see that we we get on with the plan, Madam Speaker. There are lots of things in here, Madam Speaker, that we need to do for this country. Who is going to tell me that we are going to delay and delay and stall for whether it's political reasons or whatever, the redevelopment of our schools, the rebuilding of our schools, the modernizing of our schools, the, 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 the ability to, to put the schools in the right place, the ability to build junior schools and, and senior schools, the ability, Madam Speaker, to create a, an atmosphere to really lift our education system in the territory through a recovery and a redevelopment plan for the territory. Who's going to tell me that they're going to start that? Who's going to tell me they're going to, they're going to play political games with that? It's time to get on with it, Madam Speaker. A year has passed. A year has passed. And we must still here go back to talk about going to some committee and going to some stage where we could keep rehashing and rehashing. It's time to get on with it. <clears throat> Nothing is wrong in making your comments and making your views and suggesting, giving ideas, and whenever we have to make adjustments to the plan, we make adjustments to the plan. But the Premier and Minister of Finance, who's responsible for recovery and development, at some point he must bring forward a plan, Madam Speaker. And he must wait till Christmas or till next year. Madam Speaker, it's time to get on with this. I am happy that he has pushed hard to get ahead to the House of Assembly this morning, that we can work towards beginning the process beginning the process of, 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 of seriously recovering the, the territories, um, state, and, and, and developing the country for the good of the people of the territory. And yes, what is wrong with putting an airport in the development plan? Nobody expects the airport to be built next year or tomorrow. But of course, we need an airport in the, in, in, in the country. Let's be clear, even, even from, the, from the point of view of an emergency, or from the point of view of what has happened last year, if our seaports or seriously damaged. And we didn't have an airport where large transport planes could have come in here. We'd have been in lots of trouble. Somebody might tell me we might have depended on St. Thomas to get our things in here, or we might have depended on Puerto Rico. But what, look what happened to them. There is need for a good airport in the territory of the Virgin Islands that we can depend, don't have to depend on neighboring islands to get people here and get goods and services here, Madam Speaker. There is a dire need for that. And don't tell me that because of the, 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 the airport is in this plan that all of a sudden it's a problem, Madam Speaker. I, I don't think that's, that's a, fair, a fair thing to do. And like I said, you have to plan forward. You have to have a broad-minded plan to see that this territory can go in the right direction in the future. Lots of things, Madam Speaker, in here that no, no one would expect to happen tomorrow or next year. I'll give an example, Madam Speaker. After the storm, <clears throat> Madam Speaker, we all, as somebody said, went to ground zero. We were all equalized. I, 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 I did, know what to, did, know, did not know what to do and where to start. But we had to start somewhere. The, 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 the secretary or was it, uh, for, 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 for foreign affairs or whatever he was, uh, uh, Honorable Dr. Pickering um, at the time, Boris Johnson, uh, Johnson um, showed up here at a roundabout and met me, lifting galvanized to put on trucks and directing traffic. We all had to do what we had to do to get out of the mess we were in. Didn't matter who you were, what you were, whether you're minister, whether you're, 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 you're a department head, whether you're, you're a bottle washer or cook, everybody had to put their hands in to get this country back on track. Every morning, my permanent secretary, God bless his soul, 
Mr. McMaster, however he got to the point that he got to in terms of getting to the Tortura Pier Park, where he met every morning with, with various persons in the team, he would call me after 6 o'clock every morning, as long as we had communication, in terms of what they were planning to do and how they were going about trying to get the place cleaned up and organized and, 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 and worked out. And one of those, some of those meetings, Madam Speaker, he was engaged with the Electricity Corporation on a daily basis to try to see how we can get electricity back on, on track. I got a call one day to come to the meeting, Madam Speaker. Simple matter that I, I didn't deal with before. I don't, didn't know anything about, except for my time when I sat on, on, on the electricity board with my good minister here, who was the then general manager, Honorable Skelton. When I went to the meeting, there was an issue of how we're gonna get transformers here, simple thing like that, and how we're gonna get poles into the territory to get the territory recovered. Should we go to regular route, how, how they got them, which would take two months at a time, and may cost less and may last longer, as was told to me, but wouldn't get here until two months later because of the manufacturing to be done in the United Kingdom. And I said to them, no, we can't wait that long. Find poles and find transformers anywhere that you can find them. When, it, when, we, when we looked at Mexico, we were told that those transformers only last five years versus the ones from UK that last 10 or 15. I said, oh, that might be the case. But the people in the territory can't wait two or three months for transformers to come from the United Kingdom. Buy the transformers in, the, uh, in, in Mexico. Somebody told me later on that I, it was asked a question by somebody from overseas somewhere as to whether I had interest in, in, in the people, the company that produced them in, in Mexico. Why I was suggesting them out of Mexico. That's how le the level we get to when we were trying to recall from emergency. I asked the cooperation to make sure to get those transformers in here quickly. Good thing we had moved so quickly because two weeks later, when Puerto Rico and St. Thomas got hit by, by Maria, the manufacturers, especially in the United, United States, were ordered by FEMA not to ship any transformers out to any country except the United States, Virgin Islands, or Puerto Rico. Good thing we had started looking for transformers down in Mexico. We can't play with recovery. We can't play with, 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 with development, Madam Speaker. We can't wait any longer. Thank the Lord and knock on the wood so far. We have been spared for this year. We're not out of it yet. But we must not wait another day. This thing is urgent. We need to get on with the country. In the discussion with the Electricity Corporation, Madam Speaker, the other thing that we talked about was that, yes, every pole almost in territory was broken or knocked down or leaning. Or no use. <clears throat> yes, every line was down, <clears throat> Madam Speaker. And the good, the good thing about the, the center of the, of the country, the, the capital, was that some years ago we pushed hard to make sure that lines and uh, lines were buried on the ground, and that power could be could be given to the to the various businesses in town and the hospital through underground cable, so that in a couple of days' time, they were able to receive power from the electricity corporation, with, uh, 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 the, 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 the generating station, which was spared from the storm because of the resilience that was built in them. So the question was put, <clears throat> how can we have the same thing happen in terms of future resilience to the rest of the territory, to Eastern Long Look, to Carrot Bay West End, to Virgin Gorda, to Postal estate to every retro territory, how can we get to bury our main lines underground so that in the event of another storm, Madam Speaker, that we can be resilient? That it may not take six months, but maybe a month to recover. How can we do that? And Madam Speaker, the numbers were, 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 were um, estimated, and the electricity cooperation providing for us. And those numbers are in this, this, this recovery plan in this book. Is it that we want to play around? <clears throat> we'll wait until we find some money sometime down the road to start looking at building a more resilient electricity grid? Yeah. Right, speaker, that's, not, that's not right. We have a, a plan in this, in, this, in this to try to build a better 
resilient electricity grid so the car they don't have to wait six months to get back on track. So that the lines, the main lines can be on the ground that tolls on to have to be depended on, that we can bury the cables. But it costs millions of dollars to, 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 to dig up the road, dig up the mountains, put cables underneath the ground, and provide the main lines into the various villages and, and areas of the territory and our sister islands to be able to come up with electricity soon after disaster like this. Soon after. Instead of six months, it may take a month to get people's houses back on track. Because the main lines would have been there, secured, and all you have to do was, was rebuild the, the lines to people's houses and so on. That, that, I don't remember the number in here that it says. Some in, in, in the 70s or $80 million to do that over, over the next three to five years. It'll take time. But we have to plan for it. We're going to play politics with that. Man, it's become anxious to see the electricity corporation get on with starting to, 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 to build out the area to have a, re, a more resilient electricity grid throughout the territory. It's important. We have a situation, Madam Speaker, where, where, the, where, where the generation, generation for the entire territory for electricity is in Pakwood Pond on the western end of the island. Anything happened down there? You don't have any generation anywhere else. Just like what we did with the water situation. We put the water on one end to send it down to the other end. So, Madam Speaker, we, we are saying that we want to be able to put some level of resilience our redundancy to have some power generated in the eastern end of the island, where it's Paracuta Bay or somewhere else. And then we have to look at our sister islands, Virgin Gorda and Igara. We have built into the system, Madam Speaker, even the situation where we want to, we want to be able to push harder and push more quickly towards um, renewable energy for the territory. These things cost money. They cost expertise. They cost time. This plan has that idea in here that we can continue pushing towards um, renewable energy for the territory so that we can provide it. And you got a, and you got a power breakdown the other day because of gen, a, a diesel generator breakdown. No power to the island. Luckily for us, we had some generators, some backup generators that just arrived on the island that we could ship over there the next day, Madam Speaker. But Anigara is a flat country that can, that can take easily solar energy to power up the whole, the, the entire energy garden. And maybe one day they can, they can even sell energy to Virgin God or to the rest of the territory. But we have to plan for it and we have to fund it. It's in this recovery plan. We cannot play around with it anymore. If we play around and wait till we know every nitty gritty in every little corner, every little issue about it, we're not leaders of this country. We need to lead. We need to lead. We need to get on with it. The, the people are begging for our help out there, Madam Speaker. It's important. The government can't continue to depend, Madam Speaker on our everyday taxpayers' money to recover the territory fully out of cash. We know better than that. We have to pay our regular bills. We have to take care of our civil servants. They're working hard to help us to do all the things that they do. If we play around here and, 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 and we come to a position where we can't continue to build a little reserve, we can't continue to plan for the future, how are we going to be able to pay those civil servants if we fool around? We are tethering on an economy that is fragile with the situation with the financial services business. We have to shift our direction in, in, in terms of an economy. It needs, Madam Speaker, the tourism development of this country needs strong and heavy investment in infrastructure. Remember for a second, we'll tell you how he has been pushing very hard 
to get infrastructure in his district up and running so that his tourism sector in that area can thrive. His people are, are, are in, in, in the hospitality business. If the roads aren't fixed, the cruise ship's not going there. If the sewage isn't repaired, they're not going there. Madam Speaker, if you don't build a, a decent resilience in terms of a sea defense, he wouldn't have any roads soon when the ground sea comes up. These things don't cost pennies, Madam Speaker. These things cost a lot of money. We have to build it into the recovery and development plan and stop playing around with it and get on with it. So I'm pleased that the, the Premier and Minister of Finance has pushed. We long overdue with this thing. Madam Speaker, and I, I hear all kinds of things talking. There might be my concerns too. And of course we must raise the concerns. And of course if, 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 we, if, if, we, if, we, if we think things are not going right in certain directions, we must raise our concern, Madam Speaker. Of course we should. There's this suspicion that has been going on, and sometimes some people in certain quarters make a suspicion look like it's true, that the RDA look like they want to take over the, the place. And maybe the way it starts, it all looks up with you. And I, may, I raise my concern with the Premier about the matter. Unfortunately, some of our own people who give this impression. The RDA, Madam Speaker, as far as I'm concerned, is an arm, it's going to be an arm of the government responsible for the execution of projects that ministries approve and ministries agree to under the auspices of the cabinet <coughs> of the Virgin Islands. And if they don't go that route, something will be wrong. That is the, the understanding that they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be given these projects to execute and carry out under the direction and under the agreement with the ministries responsible for the project. If they're going to build a road, my ministry and my team must be involved and giving them the mandate to go and build that road. They don't choose which road they can build first, and which road they can build second, and which road they should build and not build. Under the, the, the understanding of the ministries, they're supposed to carry out that, that project. And Madam Speaker, it may not be perfect at the beginning. It will have to be fine-tuned, and we all will have to understand how things are going to work. We are human beings. We make mistakes. Some people may have jumped out and gone out in terms of executing what, what they, they, they should execute with their, with their anxiety to make things happen and may have made a mistake in how to do it. That happens. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't have a recovery and development plan that we're going to urgently try to put in place, Madam Speaker. So I am anxious to see that we can get on with this recovery and development. The diversification, Madam Speaker, of the economy is crucial. It looks like we want to wait till the next government is in office to, to make these things happen at the expense and on the backs of the people of the Virgin Islands. That's not fair. That's not right. All of a sudden, everything is in the air about the elections. In the meantime, Madam Speaker, the people must not get on with their life and get on with their business, and the government must not plan and develop a country because the election is in the air? No, man. And I'm not talking, I'm talking about all sides here. It's time to get on with it, Madam Speaker. And I, I hope the Premier don't flinch. I hope he doesn't flinch. He needs to get on with his development plan. Whether people think that the governor wants to take over, And the message must be made clear to even him that this body here is who should run this country. This body here. No RDA. No governor. The people, the elected people of the Virgin Islands should run this country. That is what is expected. But Madam Speaker, I have, to, I have to say that I appreciate the support that the governor has given us in the aftermath of this. He has been urgent and ardent about his efforts to see this country recover. 
And I believe he's genuine about it. He wants to work with the Premier and with us to get the country recovered. Whatever influences he can have out there to find help, whatever influence he can have to give us some, 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 some guidance or whatever it is. I personally have seen him try, and I want to appreciate the efforts he, he's made. If it gets to me, or if I understand at any time that his efforts are, are, are designed to take control, he will hear from me. He knows that. I don't, I don't have any, any, any qualms about telling him my feelings about it. And I don't have any qualms about standing up publicly and saying what I think about it also. But man, I've seen him try. I've seen him, I've seen him compromise in trying to make sure that we get on with the, the, the development and restructure of this country. And under no guise, Madam Speaker, under no guise should he or anyone else, whether it's under security guise or whatever guise, should anyone in this country look to try to take over the running and ruling of this country from the elected members of the country. That is not, that is not in the right spirit of democracy and good governance for any territory in the world today. Anyone who wants to take over the, 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 the ruling and running of a country from the elected, democratically elected people of the Virgin Islands will always, will always come up against a, 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 a block or a wall. And, and forgive me, but I hope they can understand the term they're going to use. They're going to put up. They're going to put up. Because you cannot, in this day and age, try to come up with all kinds of guides and ways to rule a people. Madam Speaker, even with trying to buy their hearts and souls, in this day and age, you cannot do that in a democracy where there's a constitution, a, a, a constitution where the elected members of a country are elected to rule and govern the country. At the same time, Madam Speaker, any country in the world is interdependent with other countries of the world and other peoples of the world. Any country. You, 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 you try to affect the economy of China, you try to affect the economy of other countries, and your stock market can fall. Because when China fails, you're going to fail. That's how the world is intertwined today. So if we all don't understand those things, we must try to understand that we need help from other people. We are inter interdependent. Of course, Madam Speaker, I am not going to, to, to hide. We need the help of the United Kingdom government in recovering. We need the help of the United Kingdom government in developing the country. They have chosen to offer that help through small grants and through guaranteeing a 300 million pound loan translating to $400,000, where over the next several years, we can at least have a basis to begin to develop the country. Whether it costs more or costs less, we have a basis to develop, develop the country, Madam Speaker. And I've said it before, Madam Speaker, we're playing around with it. Somebody giving you something, and you're here waiting and talking about all the other little issues that you have to resolve, yes, but that you can get on with the thing and fix the things that you're going to fix as you go along? We, Madam Speaker, we... Yes, I'm, I guess we can be beggars and still choose us because we're not selling our souls. But at the same time, we must appreciate that help is being offered and go and tell all you men on the street who may not understand that you're getting some help, but we're refusing it when his house is in, in shutters. When his job is at stake, when he's not sure where he's going to go to work for the next dollar, 
go and tell him that you don't want to take help because of that. And because of this. And because of the other. And because you haven't seen a regulation. And because this and Mr. Speaker. We are in here to represent the people of the Virgin Islands. Not, Madam Speaker, in the abstract sense of the word people as one big general sense. Madam Speaker, we are here to represent people when you look in their eyes in front of you, individuals, when you look in their hearts, when you look in their houses, when you see they don't have a fridge or a stove or they just want to get a bed. Every day, Madam Speaker, people are calling for help. They want help. The government don't have a bottomless pit. But we have to help the people. And here it is, we are, we are being offered help. And what needs to be provided to, 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 to accommodate the help? We are here trying to find every cause and every reason to delay it. We know about this recovery plan. We know about this thing for the longest while. The, 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 the crux on this, of this matter, Madam Speaker, has been in our hands for a long time. Yes, somebody's going to say we just got this money, which is fair. And I agree that we need to give more time to look at it. But the crux of it has been in our hands for a long time. Mr. Project Penn and his team, whatever the group name, DCC or D, whatever, uh, uh, Premier, they have been, they gave us this thing for a long time. We had these numbers, how much electricity we need, money for all the electricity, how much money you need for roads, how much money you need for schools, how much you need for hospitals, how much you need for clinics, how much you need for the beaches and the environment. It's been in our hands a long time. Long time. Since last year, December, we had these numbers and this information. We're playing, we're playing around with this country's recovery and development, Madam Speaker. We're playing politics with it. And every righteous reason, every righteous reason to give in for not, not supporting and getting on with it. Every righteous reason. I'm sure. And everybody is entitled to their opinion on their, their democracy. So I don't. I, I am not saying that you're wrong to have your feelings, but you're representing people who need help, and you're representing people who need to get on with their lives, and you, if you continue playing games in this house and delaying helping the people to get on with their lives, where, where, where are we going to get the money from to, to, to build up King Garden Bay? Where are we going to get the money from to go fix Carrot Bay and put all them walls and all them, them, them stones and everything to help the people to avoid the next storm coming that their, their roads don't get washed out and their houses don't get damaged. Where are we going get the money from? These are big monies. How are we going to do the sea fence coming up, coming up, coming up Parkwood Pond and uh, along the Drake's Highway? Serious sea defense for when the next surge comes in. Where are we going get the money from? We have the money offered to us now, and we are here for the provision that has to be given to ensure that money comes to us. We are still here delaying, as if we are in some comfort zone, some comfort zone that we, we, we don't have any worries about. We are in a comfort zone, and we still go to the people telling them we want to help them. We still go to the people telling them we will fix you. We go, in, the, in the next nine months or eight months, whatever it is, we will go to the people telling them, vote for me because I'm going to fix the country. And we have the fixing the country thing right in our hand here, and we're playing the fool with it. Waiting. For what? Delaying. For what? Madam Speaker, look in the people's eyes. Long Bay, Long Bay needs serious work along, uh, along, along, along the beaches there and so on. The people look in my eyes as I go there and they tell me they need the help. I'm sure they tell the representative. And we are all saved, promising we're going to do it. Where are we going to get the money from? Where are we going to get the money from, Madam Speaker? The money is in this plan and we're paying with it. The United Kingdom Parliament approved the idea to give us a 
whatever you call it, a, a, a guarantee. But we have to do certain things to be able to get it formalized and finalized so the United Kingdom Parliament can finally approve it. We have to have a plan in place. No, other, no agency or no donor or none of the people out there who want to help the country want to help it because we said so or because we look in the face and talk. We have to have an approved plan by the House of Assembly that they are comfortable that whichever government is in office, that their donation or their financing will be secure to make sure that we are doing the right things to get this, co this country recovered. Not a piece of sticker. People borrow money and you're, you're getting to the difficulties sometimes and it happens. It's not happening to governments. It's happening to governments all over the world. Because you can't predict the total future. You can't predict the future at all. But you have to plan for it. We can fool the people some of the time. Madam Speaker, but we can't fool the people all of the time. I wear my red tie today. I wear the red tie. Because I believe this government, National Democratic Party, government led by the Premier, Dr. D. Lennon Smith, this government, I believe, is doing the right thing to get the country recovered. We may not be doing it as fast as everyone would like to, but we're trying to do the things that, to help this country recover. So I, I am supporting. Premier and his efforts to make it happen. Madam Speaker, let's get on with it, man. Yes, we're going to have some issues. Yes, we're going to have some little differences. Yes, we have some little problems. Yes, and as leader of opposition, as, and as, and as an opposition member, I, I, I've been over there. Yes, you're going to have some objections to certain things. And you, you're right, you should, because you're out there looking out for the people. But don't hold up progress. Don't hold up. Restructuring, the, rebuilding the, the, the country, recovering the country. Don't hold up development for the country that is in the interest of the people of the country, not just even now, but down the road. Children, grandchildren. Don't hold it up because we have all little differences and all little feelings. We don't get them fixed. I may, be, I may want to go downtown, Madam Speaker, by the house, by the um, <coughs> Bank of Poplar or somebody, and I, you may decide to go down this road here to get straight there in front of me and get on the Bank of Poplar. But I may think that the traffic will be a little rough there and I may go around up at the street light and come back down and we all don't get there. But we may not get there at the same time and we may not get there in the same route, but let's get there. Let's join as a group and stop fighting and fussing and get on with it, Madam Speaker, and get this country fixed. Everything is a, is a, is a battle. We want, yes, everybody likes, likes to know the all information. Yes, everybody wants to know what's going on. Madam Speaker, if you don't put the broad pitch out there to get on, to get on with it, me and get on with it. I can go through this, this, this document, Madam Speaker, in the back of it and list every project that is suggested and recommended to go forward. And I may sound good. But Madam Speaker, we know it ain't gonna perfectly happen. It's never perfectly happen. The economy of this country, Madam Speaker, is crucial and vital to the recovery of this territory and for the development of this territory. The economy is crucial and vital. Some people are all over the world, some people in different countries covet our economy. Covet it because it's a small country with 30,000 people. We fend our own way as much as possible. We pay our bills. We don't have the ability to, to fund recovery. We don't have the ability for, for major developments, so we have to borrow money. We can't build airports on our own. We can't build seaports on our own. We have to borrow money. We can't spend $50 million to fix our roads. We have to borrow money. We can't take it out of the ordinary, regular DP or, 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 or recurrent money of the people. We have to borrow money to do this. We can't go build back. The, the territory needs some major investment in schools even before the hurricane. Madam Speaker, yes, we need a lot of fire trucks. Madam Speaker, yes, the Minister for Natural Resources and Responsible Airports 
had to go and find even now nearly a million dollars to buy a, a fire truck to be in Virgin Island so we can get the Virgin Island Airport open. And it's here. But it takes money and it takes investment. And whether that fire truck is ever used, it has to be there. And yes, he has to go and build a building to protect it from the elements and, and, and the sea blast now. Because we want to make sure we get the, the Virgin Island Airport open. But I'm thinking these are things that cost money. These are developments that we must do. The man of the time is limited, but I gotta speak. So I need to speak. Because anything that delays the development and the recovery of this territory or anyone. I believe, Madam Speaker, I'm not, we're not properly representing the people of the territory of the Virgin Islands. You've got to have big heart. I don't care what they tell me. I had a big heart. The Premier told me to build a cruise ship and I built it. But at the time, it cost more than white that planned the cars before and all kind of thing. That, they could talk that all day long. But they tell me the way we went about was wrong. You can talk that all the long. But I know there's a cruise ship out there that God blesses there. God blesses there. Because even now when we're trying to recover and the tourism economy is down, yesterday Disney cruise ship was here with passengers that spending money. It don't just happen. You have to have heart. You have to have will. And the legacy of that cruise ship pair going to be the premier Minister of Finance legacy that he built a cruise ship despite what I think. Yeah. When H. Slavity Stout was building a college, there was all kind of talk by very intelligent people that we don't need a college to the Virgin Islands. We can send people off to school. Yeah. When in the 60s or 70s he decided to, to build a road to get down to Western on, on the coastline and blow down the hill, I'm sure there was talk then. When they decide to build the, 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 the pair, the port, up, up, in, uh, up in, in, uh, in, in Port Purcell, and he didn't have the money and he gave it to Jerry O'Neill to build and tell him, take some land where you recover and build it for us. Yes, there was criticism. Yes, there was somebody who said, don't do it. Let's wait five years. Let's wait another. We don't need to do that. We have enough boats to go to St. Thomas and come back up and all kind of thing. Yes. I can imagine them right now. When he came here with a social security um, uh, 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 a bill to pass it, God bless Honorable R.F. O'Neill, who's an opposition second, he can support it. When all the others are kicking up against it, say, we take money from the people who pocket for it. God bless the social security bill. Now people can retire at 65 and get some help. People can get help when they're sick. People can get help when they come along. The people I'm talking now can think about the NHI. And speaker, let them talk who ain't getting help. Those who get getting help with the NHI, listen to them. Listen to them. So Minister of Finance, Minister of Health, and all of you who push to get you that NHI thing, God bless you. Ten years from now, we don't know where you'll be, but God is going to be blessing you because you push to make sure the people of the territory, despite the criticism, despite the talk, you push you to make sure that you got this bill passed, the bill for NHI. Now, Madam Speaker, we're here with the recovery and development plan of a territory. Sure, you're going to have issues. Sure, you're going to have persons objecting to this and objecting to that and objecting to different things. And they might be right. Madam Speaker, I'm not saying they're going to be right. But does that mean we're going to delay and delay and go to the committee and come back to the committee and go back and come back when a year later we, we, don't, we can't get on with the plan? It's wrong. It's wrong. I know people don't get up and afterwards and talk and say that, I, 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 that, that is a democracy and they could have, people can, I can say what I want and they must have their say and all kind of thing and who disagree and who disagree. And I, whether, it's, whether it's disagreement on this side or that side, I'm going to speak my mind. Because I believe it's the right thing to do. I hear members in my, even on my side say that they regret the past of RDA, Madam Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, that is, that is their democratic right to say that. But I know down the road, hopefully, we can get this plan, get on with it, and get this country fixed. Madam Speaker, I am the Minister of Communication and Works. I don't have the money to fix the roads. The people are looking to me for money to fix the roads. I ain't got the money to fix the road in Fibatham. I don't have the money to fix the road in, in Possil. I don't have the money to go up Greenland and fix all the roads up there. I don't have the money to go up Nottingham. I don't have the money. It's in here. Let the people know it's in here. And I don't have to fix it. Let the RDA go and fix it. No problem with me. No problem with me. But let's get them fixed. The Premier wants to see the country fixed. I with you, Premier. I am with you 100%. The Governor wants to see the country fixed. We in here want to see the country fixed. We might have different ways of going about it. And I know we may have our differences about it, but let's get on with it. I know I always probably sound like an eternal optimist. And I get up every morning I can get up every morning and start fussing about all the things that are wrong, all the things that, that could go wrong. And so we can get up every morning and have a problem. But I get up every morning with a positive mind. And I call up Mr. McMaster, uh, my permanent secretary, I call up this person, that person, and I say, how can we fix this problem? How can we fix this issue? How can we go down the road and, and, and deliver these things? But somehow in life you have people blocking sometimes, all the time. People are trying to get on with, their, with, 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 with their, their efforts in the private sector to get the country moving. And sometimes, <clears throat> in our own sphere, there are people who are blocking. We had, a, we had a monster storm that came through. The port was in major problems. People couldn't get their, their, their containers out as they should. And yet, we want to charge them a set of money for the containers under the law. And then you want to use our discretion. And don't want to make adjustments. The people, it was in a crisis situation, and we have to be up there trying to, to, to kill the people. We need to recover and be able to use our common sense to recover properly, and be able to support the private sector in recovering. The Premier went ahead and did that. He gave, he, 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 he suspended custom duty on many things for, for some time. He afforded people to bring, bring workers in to build, rebuild the country. We might have differences about that, but we get on with it. It's the only way the country can recover and, re and develop. Don't come here and tell me we only must have a recovery plan, but we must have a development plan. Because the development plan, look at we're doing something political. What nonsense is that? And because the development plan coming in, uh, the government should have been part of the development plan just before the election. So we must go and pay, just repave the roads, do this, do that, and don't develop a country properly for the future. Madam Speaker, if we're going to go into tourism in terms of our efforts to diversify the economy, you need roads, proper roads. You need proper ports. You need proper airports. You need all the important things that you have to do. The environment needs to be taken care of. The beaches have to be, have to be fixed and, and, and protected. All kinds of things need to happen that cost money. Just one day, any gather. Virgin Garda, Peter Island, Norman, all the islands need to be fixed to be able to move to serious tourism products. We are all talking the, the big word of tourism products, tourism and tourism, and when the time comes for us to put the teeth, put the teeth to get tourism on track, we want to delay, we want to hold up. We want to every, understand every iota, as, as my mother used to say, every iota of the plan. I, I always try to encourage those who are young and new that, you may, yes, we all have our brilliant ideas. I had them. 
But experience has taught me that sometimes what you think is so right and so perfect may not be, and you may have to allow things to happen, make your input, and let things happen so that the country can grow and develop. As nothing will ever happen. Nothing will ever happen. You're not going to get it perfect. You try your best, but you're not going to get it perfect. The mandate of the Premier and Minister of Finance, the leader of the country, is to bring forward things to us to move this country forward. At this moment in time, he has to bring forward something to us to help the country to recover. And I want him to understand that I support him in moving that direction. I want the governor to understand that continuing to negotiate with United government, the United Kingdom government to get us the help that we need to move this country forward. Thank you, Governor, for working for, on our behalf. Nothing is wrong with that. People come and tell me, overshadowing the Premier, and overshadowing this. Man, you, you overshadow, but you bring the money. You bring the help. You continue to bring in some generators like you did, bring in some fire trucks. Help us bring in some trucks to the public works. And help us. You bring the help. Overshadowing. Madam Speaker, we've got to move the country forward. The policies, the issues that we need to tra straighten out. The biggest thing to me, Madam Speaker, is not so much the rules that I'm, on, I'm in charge of, not so much the sewage and the water and all the issues that people harp on all the time, which are important. The biggest thing to me, Madam Speaker, in this recovery and this development is that the children don't have a school to go to. And no school here costs a million dollars or two million dollars to fix back. And we are coming here every day delaying a plan that is designed to fix the schools for the children of the territory. And we are saying we're going to committee and we're waiting for. Time to get on with it, man. These good gentlemen put together a plan. Mr. Broderick Penn and, he, and his team, they worked hard, day and night. They come to us and went back from us, they come back to us again. They bring it to this house already. The plan was laid, this, this recovery plan was laid on the table. The ideas that they had about it after the, after the, and, and, I, I, and I, Madam Speaker, I, I don't like to hear people talk things that are not true. The government went all around the country asking people's views and input in this plan. They went all about the place. I went to several of the meetings. People gave ideas. People came up with different suggestions. People criticized the government. People did all kinds of things. There's nothing wrong with that. And now people come tell me the, the people in here are input in it. What we're going to do? Go back with this now again after we finalize this and go back and go around again? When the people look up into the roof and they can't see, they, they only see in the sky? And we hear time will go wrong again to the people. It might be the people's plan. Madam Speaker, we, we are elected to lead. We heard from the people. It's time to get on with what we have to do, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I have a lot more to say on these things. I have a lot more to say next week, Madam Speaker. Now, Regent Cruz Land will be here with 5,000 people. The taxi men will have something to eat. The, the, the people down in King Gandhi and East End and Virgin Water and Yos Van Dijk and Anigara are going to be able to see some economy, something in their, in their cash registers. I can listen to naysayers. I can listen to all the people who say, who, who thief up money and who do what and all kind of foolishness. As if, as if the minister and as if other, others can go in, in, in some check, check and account and take out some money. Talking thing what they know about. I could have gone and, and listened to them and I speak. I could listen to the, those radio talk show hosts. Mr. Whatever your name, Henry or something name. Who's saying he got a letter saying that the British government said he can't run again? He ain't shown me a letter yet. All some nonsense. <clears throat> British government said I can't run again. <clears throat> you better be careful I'm gonna run again.
So I am, I am, I am concerned, Madam Speaker, that these things we must, we must, we must be careful with. People are talking rumors, talking that kind of pollution. Nothing they can, they, they can prove. And we must hold up our, discover, our recovery and development plan for that, Madam Speaker. Thank you for your point of information, and I remember for the third district. <laughs> I think it's I'm speaker, the minister didn't want to disturb me, so he sat there to, to get a chance to come forward. So please, sir, uh, I can speak on his behalf to forgive him. He just he went out and came back in. No, I, I'm not finished. Yes, you, you, you. I think you were intentional. But, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I, I, I will wrap up here since the, 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 the member don't want me to talk about strong rumors and all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, but Madam Speaker, I listen to rumors, and Madam Speaker, I raise them because there are things out there that people are talking when we are trying to, re when we are trying to recover this and, and develop this plan, Madam Speaker, and they are talking without having any proof of what they are talking. It's because I, I hope the Premier gives me some level of credit for forging through with the who's paid development despite the, 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 the rumors. A gentleman tell me, Madam Speaker, something ago, that he coming on the board, you're on the boat. And somebody look up on the hill, but what I worked hard for and my wife worked hard for, and look at the house and say, see the port money up there. <laughs> up on the hill, Madam Speaker. I remodeled my house that I built in 1979, 1980, and with a hard work, my wife and my children and us walk and remodeled my house, and people are telling people on the boat, sensible people, going say, look, look the house up there where the port money. You know, Madam Speaker, it, it's unfortunate, but that's, it, that's, it, that, that's what you get when you're in, 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 in politics. But, you know, sometimes you wish you could just hear what they said, tape what they said, going to court. Uh, 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 and tell them, prove what they said, and they can't prove it, Madam Speaker, lost them in jail for as long as you can. But that's not us. We don't do, we, we, are, we all are susceptible to criticism. I heard, I heard some other talk show, man, the same one, again, say that I, I must account for the $40 million, what, what the port, for cause the port, I must, I, I must, wherever I get, wherever I gone with it, I must find it. My grandchildren must hear that. I must see that on the, on, 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 the, on the blogs and see that everywhere. My grandchildren. For what they know and everyone that I know around me know how hard I work for what I have had in my life from the time I was 10 years old. And mother taught me to work hard. So I, I don't listen to the rumors. And those out there who are concerned for me, who thought these things were true, people come to me. Many people come to me, person come to me, speaker, and say if it's true. They even ask me if it's true that I have a boat, some big, nice, fancy yacht that came in that they say gone somewhere else that I didn't take because the people said, some boat, I hope I find it. It's, it's nonsense. Madam Speaker, foolishness in our country when we are trying to walk to recover the country. Madam Speaker, Premier, I want to let you know that I am behind you 100% with this plan, and I want you to hurry up and get on with it because I want to, to be able to look back someday in my life and see us have good roads, see us have good water and sewer systems, See us, see us, Madam Speaker, have a, a decent airport and a jet can fly me from Miami or from New York or Atlanta straight into Tortola. And, and, and maybe my wife, you're right, maybe my jet too. But I wish I could get one. And I wasn't hesitant to get it if I could have get it. So, Madam Speaker, I want to see the airport fixed. I want the Minister of Natural Resources. Don't delay. Don't let money stop with election looming and don't keep working to get our airport developed. It ain't gonna happen overnight, but keep walking. I want to see these things happen in my lifetime, Madam Speaker. We want to see them. Sure, I would like to see the people in Caribbean when I went down there and see how the storm saws match up, match up the, the Caribbean road and match up the people down there. I want to see a proper, a proper sea defense on the Caribbean and, 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 and along the whole coastline there. We want to see it. It's in here in this plan. And anybody who delays it must be responsible to the people in their, in their districts for delaying it. I ain't sure of causing it. King Garden may got to be fixed. 
You can't keep coming to me, asking me to fix it. Now you got the money to fix it. When the money's in there, four hundred million dollars. Let's borrow the money, fix the thing, them. Let's fix the thing, them man, properly. The, the coast roads need to be built of concrete and steel. We can't keep putting on asphalt. Let's borrow some money and build the coast roads. At some point, if we can't get water over the Seacoe Bay, let's put a plant in Seacoe Bay or Parkwood Pond and get water to the people on there. But we need money. We need money. Don't come to ask me on this stupidness now. You're going to fix the country. $400 million, you're going to find something to fix the country. Every you're pick, pick and tap little stupidness of every district. The money's in here under broad terms. The RDA is going to get the money and fix it. Stop the nonsense about this little district thing. We've got to fix it. Got better, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I'm, 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 I'm telling you to speak on, 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 on the subject. I'm sitting down. It's his turn to speak. And I'm not going to stop. It's not his turn to speak. He's bringing up the conversation. Honorable Minister for Communications and War. I'm sorry. Please observe the decorum of the house. I am. I'm sorry. You will. It says. We establishment of water distillation dis plant in the uh, district. Man, I on a funding source. I don't want to speak on the plan. Madam Speaker, an, it's, my member, an, bo, bo. it's my turn to speak. An, bo, no, an, but an, you but you 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 could you please take your seat? You're misrepresenting the plan. Honorable member, for the. Honorable members. Thank you. Honorable members, I. I think this is an opportune time. Tempers are flaring. We are going to recess the house. And this house will now recess until Wednesday, the 17th of October at 10 a.m., where the Honorable Minister for Communications and Work can continue with his contribution to the yeah, resolution. Boss, is my right to speak in the Honorable members, this house will now recess until Monday, the, sorry, Wednesday, the 17th of October at 10 a.m.